Hey guys, um, got a chance to get out last night and did some really good work. Um, we're very physical game, as you could see during the game. So some guys are bumped up. We had to make sure they're getting treatment, and uh, it'll be it'll be a week where we really have to get our guys feeling well physically. And uh, you know, with a twelve o'clock start, there's not a lot of time. So uh, we're up against it. And, uh, you know, as you watch Penn State on film, they are a very talented team. Defensively, they run very, very well. And offensively, it looks like they're kind of hitting their stride. So be a big challenge. Good to have it at home and uh, looking forward to it. If they can help you anyway, I'll try here. We'll take our first question from Tom Canavan, AP. Hey, Greg, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Tom? Good. What do you talk to your team about when you look at the Big Ten this year? Because, you know, Wisconsin's got one loss and they may not qualify for a bowl or something like that or a championship game. It seems so much uncertainty this year. Are you even worried that at some point they're just going to say we can't play anymore? I think everything's on the table, Tom. I really do. And I've told the guys there's nothing guaranteed this entire year. And really in life, there's nothing guaranteed, period. But Certainly 2020 has shown us that, you know, it's day to day, literally. So what we continue to do is every single day, we started off with our number one opponent and that's COVID-19 and we can't help many other people, but we can help our team because, you know, I was just thinking about it today because you see a lot of stuff in the national football league because NFL players go home to families. A lot of them have families, right? Uh, our guys live together. There, it is more of a pseudo bubble in college football than it is uh, in pro football. So um, we're really working hard to do, you know, the things that we agreed to do together and that's follow the protocols. And uh, as things keep getting, you know, I, I talk to them all the time about what's happening in college and pro football because of COVID-19 and also the statistics that unfortunately each day look more and more bleak. So uh, they are well informed, and I tell them I hate to be the the doomsdayer up here, and I'm not. I'm just trying to make us understand that how hard it's going to be to be able to play every game on our schedule, and that's our goal. Next question is from Steve Politi, NJ.com. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Doing well. How are you, Steve? Good. Uh, so I'm just not the first thing in your mind, but this is your one year anniversary at Rutgers coming up this week. Uh, if you could set, if you could set COVID aside and it's hard to do, I'm just curious, you know, how you would view or put it into context where the program is now compared to where it was when you first started. I don't even think you can, you know, like you say, it's hard to do to put COVID aside. I mean, there's no, there's just no way. Right. I mean, that's been it literally. A lot of you guys changed your job for months covering COVID. I mean, think about how different all of our worlds became. So I don't even know if there's a way to do that. If I'm just, I'm really glad we're blessed that, that the chop is what our program is, is centered around because I don't know any other year that's challenged that more. Than, than this year. And I'm not just talking the season. I'm talking really day to day, the ups and downs. Um, I don't give myself the luxury of, of reflecting very much. But if you look back from spring break, I mean, I'm in the room where I was having a team meeting and literally someone else was talking. And I got the text that our basketball team was removed off the floor for warmups. And that was the beginning. I mean, that was it, right? And those kids leave to go on spring break, never to return until June. So everything that they've been through, um, it's just day to day to day. And I'm sure when this when this season ends, whenever that is, um, we'll all have a chance to take a breath and look back and say, okay, now what do you think? Let's evaluate. I do think that our guys are really trying to do what we're asking them to do. And that may sound like, well, of course they are. Well, that's not, you know, that's not an, of course they are that, that takes a commitment 
and we're asking them to do some very tough things. It's tough to be a, a big 10 football player period, but then with all the uh, sacrifices we're asking them to make, to be able to play this season, um, that I'm really proud of the way our guys are doing it. But again, it's one a day at a time, right? Tomorrow morning we could wake up and it could be done. So um, today sitting here, standing here, you know, I'm feeling good about where we're, where we're headed, you know, we're, but it's day to day. You go to Bobby Darren, 24 seven. Greg, do you have any updates on Noah and how are you handling the quarterback reps in practice this week? Uh, you know, Noah's progressing. Um, we're going to handle the quarterback reps. Um, however, it best sets up for us to have a chance to win the game. And a lot of times when you have guys that are coming off injuries, you have to see how they do. So you have to have your plan and you have to have your contingency. If that, you know, if that doesn't work, then what are we going to do? And that's always mapped out. Um, and we'll just kind of roll with it and see how it plays out this week. And then, um, you know, make a decision as we did last week, uh, depending on how, how everybody is. Keep Sergeant, NJ.com. Greg, I know you study a lot of different uh, things, but uh, any idea um, the second quarter of games, uh, I think even outscored 81-27, uh, 16 nothing against Purdue. Um, you know, I, I, I know the Ohio State game also uh, – you know, it makes it a little bit more lopsided. But any idea, second quarter of games, uh, why that's been an issue for you? No, Keith, we've talked about it a lot, actually. You know, um, second quarter is like a dirty word around here lately. So we have to we have to figure out how we can perform better. Uh, again, in our mentality, you know, chop is one play at a time one action at a time. So I don't like to get, you know, two into fourth quarter, this quarter, that quarter. Uh, I, I try to look more at what are we doing differently in the second quarter than we are the first third or fourth rather than what can we do differently? I want to see if there's anything and we've been looking at it. And obviously if there was, we would have changed it, right? We would have got back to what we were doing it's a great question. I mean, you could say, you know, well, we just kind of hit a, we're hitting a little bit of a cold patch um, on both sides of the ball, but you know, you can't say that as the coach, you got to find a, a fix it. So haven't done a good job finding that fix it yet, but we're, we're going to, we're going to really keep working at it and hopefully we can get it cured. James Cratch, NJ.com. Greg, I'm curious, as kind of a, a newer Big Ten member, do you think it's important for the program, whether it's Penn State or Maryland, to have one of those rivalry games that everyone kind of looks forward to and it maybe helps drive you for a whole year? And my second question is, 1988, I know you were at Ramapo helping out. Did, where were you when Rutgers beat Penn State that season? I don't know. I can't remember. I was uh... – I was figuring out if, if this coaching thing was for me, I guess, you know, I was coaching at Rampo high school. So wide receivers and linebackers, strange, strange pair, right? That's what I coached uh, for one of the all time greats in, in New Jersey high school football history, Mike Mielo. It was, uh, it was the beginning of my career, but um, I don't remember. Uh, I remember it's 21, 16, right? Wasn't that the score? And uh, Coco, Coco made the big play, Doug Kukoski. And he, he made the interception to seal it, I think. Uh, yeah, that was that was certainly a big win at the time. Um, that was the year that Rutgers beat Michigan State and Penn State. And the reason I remember that is the following year I came as a GA to Rutgers. And back then, you know, nowadays kids make their own videos in 12 seconds. But back then you had to go and send your – all your stuff to a highlight film maker. And, you know, you had the voice talking over it. It was, it was outstanding. Right. And everybody sent it. Um, and I remember, I remember it like yesterday, the, the big line at the beginning of that. It wasn't a video, whatever it was, a film was beat state in 88. 
that was the the theme of that, right? So it was Michigan State and Penn State. Um, so to your question, as far as a, a, a rival goes, look, we're not Penn State's rival, right? And that's clear. And the reason is we haven't given them a reason to make us their rival. Uh, when when rivalries develop, it's because there's great contests on the field. There's great recruiting battles. And that's why so many rivalries are regional because you recruit the same kids and you have great games and um, it grows over time. I don't think you can make a rival. You know, I don't think you can say, oh, that's our rival. That, I, I don't believe in that. So if we play well enough over a number of years here, in the, in the game against Penn State, it would be a natural rival, bordering states, all that. But um, Rutgers has not given a reason yet for us to be their, you know, Penn State's rival. That's up to us. Coach Schneider, right, from Rivals? Coach, you spent a good early chunk of your uh, coaching career at Penn State. I think it was five or six seasons. So kind of a two-part question. What does this game mean to you? And I guess what's your most fondest memory at uh, coaching at Penn State? Well, the game means that it's a Big Ten game. We have an opportunity to win it. Um, so it doesn't, I mean, every game's critical, right? So that isn't an issue. I have a lot of fond memories about, about Penn State. Uh, I learned, you know, it's my first full-time job. Coach Paterno gave me a chance at 25 years old to be the secondary coach. That doesn't happen very often. And uh, just coach great players, worked, worked with great people. Um, Really, uh, uh, Coach Paterno gave me an opportunity, and I learned a ton under his, uh, you know, him as a head coach. We'll go to Bruce Beck, NBC. Hey, Greg, does the does the chop keep you grounded when you come off a big win like you had on Saturday, and you have to refocus for a game really fast in this environment? Uh, is that something your kids understand as well? Um, I think it does, Bruce. I think as a, as a way of living your life, it does, right? It's no matter what you gotta, you gotta swing it again. You gotta go. And, uh, but I do think it's a coach's job and I haven't done a great job always over the course of my career, uh, after big wins, making sure that we are back on task. Um, and that's something that, uh, that, that I think is important for me as a head coach to, to make sure that happens. Um, So we'll see. We're going to go to Chris Eisman with Gannett. Greg, we had spoken in the last couple of weeks about, you know, holding on to leads and, and why I know it's only one game. Do you think that, you know, coming back from a 10 point deficit, and then holding on to the lead and winning the game can have a big impact on the way that they learn how to win going forward? It should, right? Anytime you do anything, and you do it successfully, it should give you more confidence. It should give you a frame of reference that you can look back to and say, okay, we've done this. Um, I was really pleased the way we did it, you know, the time of possession in that fourth quarter. Uh, and if you can do that, you got a chance. Right? So um, hopefully that serves as something that they take confidence in. Uh, and when I say they, I mean our players. We'll take a few more questions here. We'll go to Patch Mulrannan with the press of Atlantic City. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, can I just ask you to please talk about uh, Muhammad and you know his kind of growth in the in the defense a lot, especially the last couple of weeks. I mean, two weeks ago, a career high in tackles. That interception against you know Purdue this weekend was huge. I swung with momentum. I mean, can you just talk about him and? his development and his impact lately uh, on the team. Yeah, I think, I think Mohammed is growing leaps and bounds as a football player. Uh, I think coach Frazier and he have really bonded. They, they, he's learning about the game of football. He's always been a tremendous athlete, uh, a big man that can run very well, very athletic. Um, but I think now what's starting to happen is he's learning football. And you may say, what do you mean coach football? They all play for but there's a game within the game that most people don't even know exists. But if you're going to be a really good player, you need to understand that game. 
And uh, he's little by little, he's understanding it. And it's fun to watch because you can see like when the light goes on in this area and all of a sudden he's doing it uh, and he's being a, he's been a very valuable special teams player too. So, um, you know, I just think that the trajectory that his, his own personal career is, is, is right on, right on how we'd like it to be right now. And he gets to, the good thing is he gets to learn behind some veteran guys that I think prepare and do it the right way. So it's great. He has a veteran coach. He has some veteran players in front of him that are kind of leading the way. And Mo's not too proud to learn. I mean, he, he is a, a sponge learning everything he can. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Chris Nowalski with Rivals. Hey, Coach. Uh, we saw uh, Brendan Borden get the start. Um, you know, what did she out of him? And did you see him um, earning more playing time going forward? You know, it's a good Good comment, a good question, Chris. Uh, I th I think Brendan played well. He did. Um, that's big for us. You know, to have, you know, you, I thought he could do that, but until you go out and do it against a Big Ten opponent, how do I know? I don't. You know, as I always say to our guys, there's some things I think I know, and there's some things I know I know. Well, now I know I know because I've seen it. So, um, yeah, that that gives us depth. It gives us uh, a chance, even in games, if if Raekwon can come back, to give our tackles a, a, bre a breather. Um, so I think it's huge. We'll take our final question from Anthony Facilli, Rutgers Radio Network. Greg, you talk about two guys in the second half who embraced their roles: Larry Stevens, the blocking on the on the kickoff return, and Brandon Myers blocking for Johnny Langan, especially him coming back after he was hurt. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Fooch. Um, Larry is just, he's just a tremendous player. Um, he's on all our special teams and he's, he's very fast. He's very physical, plays with tremendous effort. And as you said, I mean, every step of the way on that hundred, hundred plus yard return, he's blocking his guy the entire play, right? Till when, when uh, AC crosses the goal line. So, I mean, just, but that's like the tip of it. I mean, he, he does so many things well on kickoff coverage as a gunner on punt. Uh, and when he had to go in and play safety, he did a very good job. So you're looking at a very good football player and a guy who works very hard uh, at his craft. Um, Brendan Myers, I thought you, you hit on the head, right? I mean, that's not a, that's not a real glorious job to be the, the lead lead blocker. But man, he he went in there time after time and 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 did what we asked him to do. He chopped his job, and uh, if he can continue to do that, that 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 provides a really, really good uh, situation with Johnny, and and then with some other things too down the road. If he can continue to do that, thank you for the time, Coach. Okay, guys, have a great week.